Have you heard about the state of JavaScript survey? The survey results from the 2022 survey just came out in January of 2023. Perfect timing, a great way to start the new year. So what we're gonna do today is that Julie and I are gonna sit down and we're gonna show you how we looked at the survey and had some different conclusions that we came to and the way that we like to use it. And then you can turn around and use the survey how you see fit as well. You wanna see what we picked up from the survey? Keep watching. Hey, Julie, how are you? Hey, Andrew, nice to see you again. Been a little while. It's Happy been a be long. It, it, it is. It's nice to be back. It's been a long time since we've done one of these. Yes. Yes. We had a little hiatus, but we're back. Yeah. It's been busy with holidays, busy <clears throat> with, well, busy with lots of stuff with work, with holidays and everything. So, um, yeah, we were trying to come up with an idea. Of, uh, we, we have a bunch of ideas <clears throat> of different episodes we want to do for Cloud Dev Clarity. And this one, just when I saw the news for what we're going to cover today, uh, that the survey was released at the beginning of the, of the year. Pretty cool they did it like this, um, or they timed it like this, that I was like, oh my God, this is this is totally something that we should talk about because I, I've got a bunch of thoughts that I'd love to share with this. Not so much just, we're not just going to, I don't just want to rehash what's here, but I'd like for you know you and I to give us, give our thoughts and kind of opinions on 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 the survey itself. Yeah. And I mean, we've addressed this uh, survey before. So I think... Um, Talking about the new one makes a ton of sense. So yeah, yeah definitely. So we'll point. have a, we'll have a link to the episode um, both in the at the top of the uh, in the video that you're watching right now, as well as in the show notes um, to the previous episode that we did on Cloud Dev Clarity, where we covered the state of JavaScript survey. This is not going to be just like the last one. Um, I think we've actually we've spent more time looking at this and, and um, coming with our thoughts. But before we do that, I thought it'd be kind of smart to maybe some people aren't familiar with what this thing is. Um, what are we talking about today? So the, yeah. the state of JavaScript survey is a, a very, it's a survey that is put out for all uh, developers out there who want to respond to it. Um, and it's, it's a very well done, well thought out um, uh, survey for developers. And it gets a really good, there's, a, there's reasons why I really like it. And I'm going to, I'll stick to that in just a minute. I'm sure you have a similar uh, opinion or I'm sure you have your own opinions, not similar opinions, but you're sure you have your own opinions as well. Um, but the idea here is that, you know, this is just a, a way for people to find out like, what, what does the community think? There's other state of, you know, surveys that are out there. Um, Stack Overflow does something similar. Um, but this, and uh, this one is just, is strictly focused to the JavaScript ecosystem. And I would, I'd mm -hmm. extend that to TypeScript, but like the JavaScript ecosystem, including tools and libraries and front end and back end and all yep. this kind of stuff and usage. Um, is publicly available at the, and we'll put the URL to it um, uh, in the notes as well. It's just 2022.stateofjs.com uh, where you can go learn about all of this stuff. You can even buy a t-shirt from them to support them. Um, and, um, and yeah, but hopefully today, Julie and I, we're going to we're going to run through this thing and hopefully you can kind of get your, you can figure out what this whole, what, what this, uh, uh, what this means to you. So I guess let's start. Let's start with just talking about like who who are the people that actually do the do the um, answer the survey? Like what kind of response do they have there? Do you want to you want to share a little bit of this info with everyone, and then yeah, then we kind of yeah. we'll do like our high level thoughts of the survey. Yeah, itself. they give you some demographics, and I think that's an important thing because you need to understand who the people are who are answering the survey. I suppose so. Um, one of the interesting things is that they've uh, almost doubled the responses from last year, which is really interesting. So they had thirty nine thousand four hundred seventy. Uh, my my son absolutely loves the exact number. So I'm going to give you 39,472 responses this year. Um, and of them, almost 72%, so almost three quarters, filled out the entire survey, which I actually think is pretty good because it's a pretty long survey if you haven't taken it. And for everybody to actually go through to the end, I and it gives you better it gives you a better outcome anyway. So I think that's really good. Um mm -hmm. Some of the other interesting facts here are, or stats here are the bulk of the respondents are in that 22 to 44 age range. So 66% are in that age range. So I think, you know, <clears throat> we're talking about in general, you know, working age people. The uh, years of experience, meaning how many years of experience the respondents had, the bulk was in that three to five and the six to 10, uh, but it's pretty evenly spaced between those two and, and fair, you know, so fairly diverse. 
company size, again, equally dispersed between all sizes of companies. And I think that does actually help the survey because I think how a big company would react to some of the, or, you know, behave, you tools they would use would differ significantly from somebody like doing it in their free time or a single repository or whatever. So the fact that we had real diversity across the company sizes, I think is also kind of interesting. Uh, mm. Gender wise, 70% were men, not shocked by that in any way, shape or form. I mean, that's just a, a mirror reflection of the industry itself. And 50% were uh, identified as white. So I think, um, you know, it, it's a, a pretty good mix of people in a, it's nice to see that the responses have doubled, uh, over year over year. So it's getting more popular, which just means that we're getting better data and we can use it, uh, with more confidence, I suppose is a good way to think of that. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think uh, one thing to call out too on some of these demographics that you were just highlighting here um, is that some of the ones that we were that you were just covering, like the age range, like the years of experience, um, the company size, for all of those that you mentioned, about a quarter of the people that responded did not answer those questions. They did not give any yes. kind of demographic stuff. So, you know, you've got like, you know, company size, like you said, it was very well uh, uh, represented across the field. Um, but 26% of people didn't even answer that question. Um, mm -hmm. some of the other ones I did think that were kind of interesting though, is that you've got like 20% of the people are in the salary range are between 50 and a hundred thousand, uh, us dollars as their annual U S salary. Um, but if you look at <clears throat> the majority of it was, I'd say about 34, 5%, 33%, something like that. Um, was that mm -hmm. 35, 40? I, about that, that many, about 35% are making between $50,000 and $200,000, but it's still fairly representative. Those JavaScript people that answered this that are making over $200,000, those 3% those 3 of those people? Yeah. Wow. I had a couple thoughts that I wanted to lead off with this whole thing. Um, and I, I don't know if you did as well before we start looking at some of these different aspects of it. Um, but I, I wanted to kind of share like why I love this survey and really why I would really like, why I would really like to have something like this in the other areas that I focus in. Like I, I mentioned earlier, Microsoft 365 dev, uh, a long time ago, I tried to put a couple of years ago, I tried to, uh, my company sponsored, co-sponsored with another company, um, the state of SharePoint survey. And I don't want to be that, that specific. I really want to be a lot more generic and just say like, let's just talk Microsoft 365 dev. I don't think I'd want to do like power platform and stuff, but you know, I know cloud, the clarity we're, we're trying not to be as we're trying not to be like specific Microsoft 365 focus. We're trying to be more general uh, dev, uh, kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, again, that I know that's who probably a lot of the people that are watching this, at least that's our background. Um, yeah. I'd love to do that, but I, I want to share like why, like when I first started looking at this I didn't really start until we were doing this episode, I didn't really start thinking about why, why do I like this survey so much? Why is it, why does this particular one? So mm -hmm. like eye opening to me, and I guess the stack overflow one similar, and maybe, I don't know for the people who are watching this, would you like for us to do one of these on the stack on the stack overflow survey? Because I mean, it's kind it's similar stuff, um, not yeah. the exact same thing, but um, my, the reason why I love this is because for me, it helps me get a pulse on what's trending things like the usage retention interest level angle. So like if I'm walking around a, somewhere and I'm trying to find a place to eat and you know, I, let's pick a like if I'm in Las Vegas and I'm walking through a casino and I'm trying to find a place to eat, if I saw a bunch of restaurants and nobody, none of them had anybody in them or no, it was all like, they were all solid walls and doors to come in, but I couldn't, I couldn't see like what was uh, like, who, how many people were in there. You know, you're kind of just choosing blind, but if I'm walking through like down this, I'm, I'm thinking of, man, of MGM where there's this one hallway, it's got a bunch of restaurants on it. If I see a bunch of people waiting outside of a restaurant and the restaurant's kind of busy, Versus the one right next to it is not as busy and there's, you can walk right and get in. I mean, you know, without really, I, I'm not passing yeah. judgment on it, but that really just tells me like, I, I'm generally going to be more curious about the one. What, what am I missing here? Right. Yeah, right. No, absolutely. Yep. So <clears throat> like, I mean, you look at this and I mean, I've seen a lot of these terms I've seen throughout the entire, um, 
uh, throughout the entire uh, survey, a lot of the products, a lot of the tools, libraries and stuff. But some of them I hadn't seen before or I knew very little about. And so some things are kind of like reinforcing. Like, you know, I, I remember reading about Quick uh, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like, I like the concept. I, this is kind of cool. We'll talk more about it later. And then you see it pop up and it's like, OK, where does it kind of fit in like the in the global ecosystem? I know 40,000 isn't everybody that does JavaScript development, but it still gives me a little bit of a bead on where things are. Right. Um, but it all, the other thing that I really like about this and that I'm going to highlight a lot of it and the things that I talk about are some perspective on satisf- satisfaction score. So I can mm-hmm. like if I sat down with a bunch of develop a bunch of my students and I was like going, so, you know, you guys are doing SharePoint framework development. What are you using? What are you not using? That's one thing. But when I ask them, you know, what do you like? What do you not like? What have you used and you were not going to use again? Like, you know, a world that you live in, like you spend a lot of time with an SDK uh, wrapper for the SharePoint and and Graph um, REST APIs, um, the PMPJS library. And, you know, so kind of look at it and go, you know, hey, somebody who's used PMPJS, you know, you've used it. Would you use it again? And I'd like to know that in the cross section of like, and those of you that have used the SharePoint REST API or the Graph REST API or the Graph client, where's your response if you've used all those things? And that kind of is going to give me a beat on like, okay, these people that have used this, they like it or how much do, yeah. how much do they use it and really not like it? And that's, I think some of these, some of the answers that we'll look at here <clears throat> are really going to highlight some of those, like expose some things. Like if you look at the data in a different way, it says something totally different. Right, right, right. And there's so many ways to slice and dice it depending on what your goal is on what you're trying to get out of it, right? Um, I totally agree with you. Uh, I think from my own perspective, I like to also get, I I think I tend to have uh, sort of blinders on because I work in such a, a siloed sort of development ecosystem that learning about or hearing about other technologies that are coming out or whatever is harder. Like I just Mm -hmm. don't, they don't come across my radar and I'd have to make a a concerted effort to go hear about what's happening. So this is a way that, you know, once a year I can like sit down with a consolidated set of information and really get myself up to speed, say, Hey, what, what has come out? What are some new things going on in the ecosystem and how are they trending to back to your point? How are they trending? Um, I like to think about the one, one of the ones you made a point about was uh, what have you used before and what do you like, you know, what are you liking or whatever? I find that one a little more interesting when you get to cut it with, uh, years of experience. So like if you say, hey, these things are really trending with the people who've used the lot, you know, have uh, six to 10 years of experience, I might weight that higher than I would saying these things are trending with somebody only with one to three years of experience. And I'm not trying to be like rude about it. I'm just sort of saying those people with six to 10 years experience have a lot under their belt to that, that when they try something new, they'll go, "Mm, Oh, I see. You're going to be one of those that we had five years ago. And you know what I mean? You, you, they have a different perspective and probably one I more share probably. I would guess I'd say. If I'm buying a house and an 18 year old is trying to lecture me on the best things to do. And I'm also having a 50 year old lecture me on the best things things to do. If that's all the information I have, I know which one's going to be a little more weighted in a, in in terms of like what's going to be more interesting or what I think is more valuable because they probably have a little more experience and a little more context than I have. Yeah. Um, so I, I agree with everything you just said. I, I the other yeah. thing that I do like about this too, and I, and I just as a, as a bit of a teaser, you guys have to stick around for this, but there's parts in this that like, there's something that I need that I'm, I was, I'm looking at for a project or like, I, I need to solve this problem or I don't like right. what I'm using right now. And I wonder if it's just me and is there a better yeah. option here? And you start looking at this going, Oh, I've got like three, three or four things that I'm looking at and I'm, yeah. that I'm evaluating. And it's like going, Oh, wait. Of those four things, I probably should take one of those off the list and I should add this other one on the list and look at them because this, and if I had to pick one, I'm like, well, this is the one that has got a high satisfaction score. A lot of people are using right. it. It's, it's maybe relatively new on the, on the, the, um, on the scene, but people that use it are loving it. It is growing yeah. year over year. But if yeah. it looked, if I just looked at it bit just based on usage going, oh, well, everyone's using this other thing here going, yeah, but they hate it. They don't have a choice. Yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think 100%. that, that you'll, 
So we'll talk about that. That's in my build tools section. And that's also in a mono repo uh, section as well. We'll cover those in a little bit. So you have to stick around for, for that part of the video. All right. So cool. Should um, we, um, should we move forward into like features just quickly? I, let's I go have with features. a little something. Yeah. I have something to, to say about this section. I don't know if you do as well, but um, actually let me, let me, let me one more, one last thing here, just to get, give you guys a heads up. This is the way this is going to be broken down and we'll have chapter, we'll have links in the, in the, um, in the notes and also in the, below the video for like chapter links. The, the state of the JavaScript survey is broken down by features, which include things like language, browser APIs and other features. There's a section on libraries. We're going to probably spend most of our time there. That's front end frameworks, rendering frameworks, testing, build tools, mono repos. There's other tools listed in there as well. There's usage, there's resources, opinions, and the kicker is when we get to the awards section, because if Julie, have you looked at the awards section? No, not really deeply. Sweet. Don't. Don't because okay, we're going to look at it together live. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. We're going to look at it live. Okay. So as Julie said, we're going to kick off with features. So Julie, I'll let yeah. you take the floor. I just had, uh, I just wanted to make a point about this, especially for um, maybe our viewers who are newer to um, de JavaScript development, don't have like a, a long history with it or whatever. Um, and we've talked about this on previous shows that a lot of times you'll know how to do something, but you won't know what it's called, or you might not even know that some, and, and actually Bob German and I do a, a show together called Browser Native, where we sort of a surface some of these things that you can do in the browser that you may not have known about. And this feature section kills it there. Because if you go through all the features they list, there's a ton of things in there that you may or may not have known that the browser can do like natively. And so um, I just wanted to surface a few of them. I go through it every time, see if I know what each one of them is. Sometimes I like look at it and go, a what? And then I'll look <laughs> it up and I'll go, oh, yeah, I do that. I didn't know it was called that, but I do that. Um, two of the ones I want to surface is there's a page visibility API. And this API allows your code to react to when the user is leaving the page or going to another tab in the browser. So, <clears throat> so that if you're uh, like, if you have some like refresh thing going or set timeout thing or going or whatever, you can respond to the fact that the user is no longer looking at your page and potentially stop doing those things while they're gone. So a very interesting uh, API that I was uh, not as uh, entirely aware of. I had an inkling about it existing. I had heard something one time, but I didn't know as much as I do now. So that was a really interesting one. And yep. the other one I wanted to surface. Oh, sorry. Go. You have a comment. Please go, I was, sir. I was going to say. Apparently, you're not in the um, you're not in the minority there because it looks like less than a quarter of the people knew yeah. about it. And of <laughs> those that knew about it, only forty percent have actually used it. So. Yeah, I, you're. Um, to, to some people like to say I am the one percent. With Julie, you can say I may. I am the twenty five percent. I am the twenty five percent. The other one that I think is really, really useful, and not something that I'm a hundred percent sure I would have need for, but yet interesting to know it exists in case is a web share API. So this is an API in your browser that allows your code to take advantage of the nating, native sharing infrastructure on your device. So if you're running a website mobile, it you can use this API to interact with like, if you're using an iPhone, for instance, and you do the share, you can sort of interact with that. So an interesting one to know about. And it, I oh. was like, oh, okay, let me file that in the back of my mind in case I have some need for that in the future. Like if you wanted to set up a specific batch of data that gets shared when somebody shares your page. You can yeah. do that with the web share API. So I thought that was interesting. And I guess I'm just saying, I think it would be really good if um, for everybody to just go and take maybe an hour of their lives and just look at all the features and just see if you know what they all are and, and just have them, in the, you know, just do the little research just to know. Doesn't mean you have to use them. Just so Agreed. you know. Yeah, well, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, there's, I, I kind of did the same thing, kind of poking around. There's a bunch of them that I didn't recognize that I had not seen before. Um, yep. But some of them, though, as you kind of look, as you look into some of them, it's a little surprising. Like, I, I'm not surprised to see things like the no, nullish coalescence, um, top level away, dynamic imports. I'm not surprised that those are in web sockets. I'm not surprised that those are well known and mm -hmm. they're well used. But and this is one where I'm always like, hey, you know, developers like going, when are you going to do this? When are you going to do this? Microsoft should totally change or should totally change like this one product to switch over and just only doing stuff like this. And you're like, really? Because that is that like FUD? 
is that like a tail wagging mm. the dog thing? Yeah. And I'm not saying it is, but WebAssembly, three quarters of the people who responded to the survey know about it, yet only 20% of those have actually used it. Yeah. Get my microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I found that I found that kind of be interesting. I didn't, I mean, that's that's the only thing I really wanted to say about the features. I wasn't, uh, I'm not as interested on those. There's a whole thing I know about like languages and um, like I, I, to me, I'm not like the one part of the survey that doesn't interest me, I think is the specific APIs that people do or don't mm -hmm. use. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's kind of interesting because I'm usually not looking for an API. Um, mm -hmm. But the one that in this, I guess it doesn't really relate directly related, but like I have zero interest on who's using JavaScript versus who's using TypeScript because to me, that's like oh, a question. Yeah. That's like a question yeah. on, on tabs versus spaces. I mean, or yeah. in how many spaces that two or four, I mean, I know, you know heathens use four, but I, I wouldn't um, <sighs> ah, yes, and use tabs. Oh, so anyway, Okay, so the Not next one that we're gonna let, let's let's go jump into the next one. So let's talk about let's talk about libraries. How does that sound? Library? How about yep. libraries? In well, do you you I, you have some notes here? You were talking about you had some overall kind of thoughts on this. Yeah, I was um, <clears throat> the retention versus usage. Um, I, I think the takeaway here is based on their graphic was that there are very few libraries that have high usage and high retention. There is only three webpack react and jest. I, and I might question why some of them are there, <laughs> but mm -hmm. we'll leave that aside. Um, the, the most of the other libraries are in the low usage, high retention. So those, they basically say, you know, those are things to keep uh, an eye on, but there's so much there. Like mm -hmm. so much there, and many of them sort of sit in the same then category, like front end frameworks or rendering frameworks or whatever. So I'm like, it's almost overwhelming. So interesting that those three stay in that high usage, high retention. I I wonder if it's sort of like the um, this is what we use. There's too much technical debt to change that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. There's no better alternative. I would doubt that. And at least two of the three of those things, I would doubt that there's not something better. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know. It's an, it's just, it's just an interesting sort of thing to look at. Like, I don't know. I, well, I thought that, I think that kind of like what is interesting about this chart to me is almost mm. the inverse of it. So for me, you know, quadrant number one is low usage, high retention. These are tech. This is tech you need to keep an eye on to me. Yeah. That's the section you ignore. Right. Because it's like you said, it's so filled with so much stuff. It's like, right. okay, that's not, I mean, I keep an eye on it, but okay, whatever. Then there's the <laughs> high usage, high retention. These are safe technologies to adopt. Yeah. Okay. But th I don't, I don't like the conclusion they come to there. I mean, again, there's only three things that are there and you said it was just, it was react and it was Webpack, and that's they right. do a good job of kind of like showing, you know, what the numbers are um, and the, the animations they have in the slide are really, or in the, on the site are really, really good. Um, yes, you and I joked yeah. about this earlier, all of these, this, this whole site is, is beautiful and the interactions yes. and the visualizations are great. Um, I can pretty much guarantee when I show this to one person, I go, how are they doing that? Are they using some, like some BI tools? Are they using like, you know, a web assembly? Are they using like going, no, I'm pretty damn sure they're using JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that. No, but that would be the, a no. Yeah. But the thing, I think that the one thing that, that, that I think that their conclusion where it says safe talk technologies to adopt, maybe so, but you may not be happy about doing it. Right. You may yeah. not be, you may not have a really good satisfaction level hint. We'll get to it, but we'll talk about Webpack in a little bit. Um, but it's just a, I think it's one of those things that you just kind of want to look at one of them. that's kind of funny. It's like uh, quadrant number four, high usage, low retention. These are technologies that if, if you're currently using, you should reassess it. Uh, yeah. there's nothing in there. So we're okay. Yeah, I know. You know, what's interesting too, is the, the one, the graph there has like a trace pattern for the change over time. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Right, right. And all three of those, <clears throat> excuse me, in that that upper right quadrant of you know high usage, high retention, have a negative opinion trend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just think that's that's just gonna say that's a little telling. It's just it's throw really that out there. 
Yeah, you guys, you, those of you who are watching this, you should really go check this survey out. I mean, Julie and I are trying to show you as we're going through this, like some of the things that are cool about how you can, you can highlight, like I can highlight over react and I can see the, the, um, the visualization of like the year of when things were and how things are trending and like, okay, so we're trending kind of in a negative way, but are we really trending in a negative way or like Webpack? Like, going, oh, it's yeah. very popular and it's rising in popularity, but wow, it's taking a very hard, crazy Ivan to the left on a negative opinion here. It's like, what's up with that? Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So, and then, oh, look, gulp, very negative opinion. And it's falling off a cliff in terms of adoption. So like. You, you have to wonder if that might be, if I was going to like assess, it's like, Hey, I'm in a company. We have all these projects. We've got technical debt. I now have in, you know, looked out into the ecosystem. I see all these other things that are way better than what we're using. So yeah, I'm still using Webpack and yeah, it's, you know, so we've got a lot of high retention and I have a lot of high usage, but that negative opinion trend is because they're looking over here going, Hey, there's this other thing and it's way better and it fixes all these things I find annoying, but I can't use it because I'm stuck. You know, like that feels how, like the right interpretation of that. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going <gasps> to tangent gonna off on people. us. He's no, gonna no, 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 no. Oh, oh, I'm not okay. going to disagree with you. But I'm going to change it off this. And I know, no, not a fight. Um, not with you, somebody else um, <laughs> oh, or an organization. Um, but, you know, it's funny because I know you and I both have experience of doing SharePoint framework development and the platform mm -hmm. that they choose, that they've chosen to kind of go with SharePoint framework development. And yep. as a build tool chain, what are we using? And what are the tools that we end up using? And how is it all set up? And you kind of look at this and you're like, wow, we use Gulp. Look at how many people are just running away from it like it's a, like it's COVID-19. Uh, look at Webpack. You know, this looks like the plague. Like people are trying mm -hmm. to get away from this and they're going to different directions, but we're not doing that. And so to me, it's like when you want to look at a growth area, you know, it's kind of hard to sell people when the market has is saying that we don't like using this tech and you're telling them this is what we've this is what we've platformed on and what we're what we're choosing to stand on and you're like i i don't that's not really the direction you might want to really consider like maybe you want to look at, at yeah. going at refreshing and kind of looking at something at a different way of doing stuff because look how we're training in this other direction and if you want to if you want to broaden your audience maybe you want to go in a direction that we're going to that we'll talk about here uh there's one tool that stands out just it is so clear that is blowing up uh to me yeah that, yeah so uh, if i'm going to play devil's advocate and i totally agree because you know i i do i i feel like there's some bloat and there's some issues and there's things that I don't like and all of those things. But I also think this is one of those catch 22s where you build something and you choose a set of tools and you, you, you can't just decide to change it, especially with an ecosystem as large as SharePoint framework is on a dime, right? You have mm -hmm. to plan that out. You have to, um, you have to sort of, like make a real use case on why that's going to be the best mo method forward. And I think that's a heavier lift, especially when you get in bigger companies. So yes, I agree that I w wish that would happen, but I can also sort of sympathize and see why it's probably not happening. If that yeah, makes sense. I can see it. I can also see the market for somebody <laughs> building a different way to, to build out tools uh, that are based, that are, that are not using Gulp and Angular and that are not using Mocha. And when I build my like, own solutions, I don't use those tools. So yeah. I agree. I understand yeah. what you're saying. All right. Oh, let's move okay. on before let's we say on. something we regret. Oh, no. I do that all the time. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of experience with that. So don't worry. I, I got us. We're good. You got uh, us? Okay, good. Okay. So let's move on. Let's talk about front-end frameworks. So what, okay. what do you want to say there? You want to go first? You want me to go first? How do you want to do it? No, you go first. I went first the last time. Okay. So I think let's look at the ratios over time. So whenever we look at these numbers, whenever we look at these charts for like that we're going to go through now, um, they all default to percentages, which I don't really care for. I like to switch over yeah. to the tab of rankings. This yep. one I really like. And because what this does is it yeah. shows me like a trend of how things are going. And also at the same time, I can see how old it is. Um, yep. The one thing that this doesn't really do well, though, is when it ranks everything, sometimes the, you have to make sure that you look at the numbers and how big of a difference yes. it is. So like, for example, uh, yeah. when I look at the retention for ratios over time for front end frameworks, I see the top four and you're like, okay, but really it's the top four that are separated by from 91% to 83% on the current day. And so you're like, yeah. 
that's not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Or it looks like it looks like uh, a React had this big falling off of a cliff, and it's like, no, it fell by one percent. That's not yeah, right. That's not a drop. One percent is not a statistical. Okay, it's a stat, but it's not. It's not going to make that much of a difference. So, right. The thing, my takeaway from from this, um, there was two or three things I found that were really interesting. So, first of all, on the ratios over time, there's a framework that I that I saw and I looked at last year. I was just curious because of the person who was behind it. It's called Quick um, Q W I K, and it has a, a very hyper focus on performance. Now, the, the, the person behind it is a guy named Mishko Hevry, which is a, he was one of the main guys, if not the main guy and the, the central author of Angular over at Google. He's not there anymore, but he, he was one of the main guys over there. I had a good chance to talk to him a couple of times and, um, really smart guy. Um, and he was one of those guys that was like, well, it, really smart guy. Um, his idea of how, of, of what quick is and, and, and why he likes it, why he built it. A lot of really interesting stuff there. So what's interesting about this though, is that you look at this on the, on the retention side. So the number's really good, but then switch over to the interest side. How many people are interested in this? And you see that it's gone up to 67% um, and it's sitting just behind Svelte and just above solid. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now let's look at usage. Oh, well, it's at the bottom of the basement. It's at 2%. So it means that there are people who are interested in it. There are people who know about it. You know, the awareness level, about half the, half the people that responded on the survey, they know what this is. But when I go back to the usage, nobody's really using it yet. And so is that a bad thing? Is that, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What does that say? They're just, it, it's just indic- indicative that people who have seen it, they're interested in it, but they're just not using it. And so that, that says different things to where you, if you look at this chart right off the bat, you're like, eh, it might tell you to go in one direction, maybe not so. Another one that it does here I found that was interesting. Look at some of the ones that are falling like rocks. If I look at the retention, look at Angular, look at Lit, and look at how these two things, specifically Angular, how much it has fallen from being um, six years ago, being like 68% of the respondents were using it. It's mm-hmm. just fallen every year over and over and over to where now it's the second to last one on the list from being the third from the top. Now it's the second to the last. Right. So would you invest in that direction? Maybe, maybe not. What's mm-hmm. the highest month? So let's talk about usage. When I look at this, a chart like this, or when I look at a, a technology, I not only want to see what people are interested in and what they like, but then I also want to look at what are they actually using? And so where's their community? If I need to go ask questions and stuff, React has been, and I know that people have like a, a knock on React. I know that Solid was a big, you know, people were really big on Solid coming into it and stuff. And same with Quick. Still, 82% of the people are still using React. And that has been steadily, it's still climbing year over mm-hmm. year. And yep. it's still just a solid tech to be able to pick. Now, what's interesting then about this, let's take this one step further. And this is the part where I find one of my, my favorite parts of these, of these charts is go down to the positive and the negative split. You look at React. A lot of people yeah. are aware of it. A lot of people are interested in, in it. And most, by a significant margin, most people are going to want to use it again. Yeah. Yes, there are some people who are not interested. Yes, there are some people who have used it and will not use it again. But then, so that shows like, okay, that is more of a safe bet. Because people aren't too unhappy with it. They're actually pretty happy about it. But then you flip it over and you look at something like Angular and people are like, yeah, that's a pretty passionate, like, I'm not really interested in this anymore. Um, And so Mm -hmm. I think this just kind of gives you a good kind of indication of, you know, where this, what the, what the level of interest level is and where you should kind of pick getting a good pulse on the, uh, on the industry. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree. And I think it can just help organizations who, um, you know, architects leads in, in bigger organizations and or people using it by reviewing this data, they can just sort of help also, uh, back up their decision-making process. Like, yeah, I think we should stick with what we're doing. There doesn't seem to be any real reason that we need to change. I mean, cause one of the things that can be bad about sticking with the technology that's dropping in usage and awareness is <clears throat> excuse me, usage and um, retention is that your tools are going to start dropping off too, right? Mm. Your samples are going to start dropping off. Your tools are going to start dropping off. You're going to, uh, the, the libraries that you might need are going to start dropping off and that's going to then impact your ability to be effective in it. And so, yeah, that's a good um, point. you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of keep that in mind when you're, you know, supporting something over the long haul. 
you know, um, you know, whether you're not getting your, your solution tech, you need to make that investment in the tech change simply because you're not going to be able to support it for the long haul. Yeah. So that, that's, that's maybe the only thing I have to add. I thought it was interesting that, um, Svelte, which I, uh, I did do, I, I was like, well, okay, what's this one? You know, like mm-hmm. had to look it up and I went and did a, like a little tutorial thing and it felt very similar to everything else we use. So I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's got some good parts. I'm no, you know, I don't have any bad feelings, but it was really interesting that it, they have, um, they have not only a front end framework in Svelte, they also have a rendering framework as well. Like, so there's sort of two pieces of it, which is mm-hmm. interesting. It's like, it feels like I'm sort of to use a really loose term. It feels full stack. You know what I mean? Like it does, yeah. does more anyway. Whatever. But it's funny you say that because there's one that we're going to come to in just a second that I think the react has the same thing. They just, they're it's treated as two different tools, but you know, yeah. Svelte's a good call out because it has steadily been number one for the last three years in terms of interest level. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, I mean, and when you cool. look at, you look at usage, Doing that tutorial. one out of five people are still, are, are actually using it. Um, it stayed yep. pretty steady. It's not growing right now, but yeah. at any rate. Okay. Rendering frameworks. Is there anything yes. else you want to say about front end frameworks? No, nope. nope. I, you, okay. we covered it. Rendering frameworks. I don't have a lot to comment on Me here. Either. I have one thing I do <laughs> want to say with this one though, that, that I, that I, I do want to, I want to, uh, I want to throw out there. There are two that really stand out to me, Remix and Next.js. So Next.js is pretty darn popular. Um, mm-hmm. The one that I think that has got my, that I'm really interested in, that I've started playing with a bit, and I, I really like it, is Remix. Um, mm-hmm. The thing that I like about Remix, it's like that Svelte thing. It is, this yeah. is, Remix is basically server-side React, but it, me- it meshes the two. Um, there's a lot of things that I think it does that it, it does simplify some things for the developer in the sense that it autom- it creates that when you create a web app, you a lot of times you got to create like a, a, an API, uh, that the web app can actually talk to. And sure. that's kind of done for you. So like I can actually build a, f- I can write a function, overload a function that is, that is, that's already there to go get data. And when the page loads, it automatically makes a call back to the server side and that specific method to get the data for the page. And then it can oh, do other stuff with it. So it's like an automatic, it's like an automatic API and everything is, it assumes you're going to use react for everything. So I'm a bit, I'm, I'm, I've used it for one small little project, but I'm probably, I'm looking to use it for some more stuff going forward. Yeah. So. Interesting. Well, that's an interesting thing to know about. I don't have a lot of use cases in my daily work type of uh, thing for a rendering framework. Mm-hmm. It's just not something I do, but, um, but I like to kind of know what's going on. Right. So it'll be interesting to hear you uh, sort of tell us more about it later. Sure. Cool. Sounds good. Yep. Uh, let's see what's next. Testing. Testing, Testing. is the next one we're going to cover. What do you yeah. want to talk about testing? Yeah. Well, again, <laughs> as I've mentioned before, don't do a lot of testing. We do. Uh, we use, um, Mocha, chai, mo, chai and Mocha for PMPJS uh, testing, and that works pretty good. Uh, we're pretty happy with it, quite honestly, for a library like that. Testing the APIs works pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Um, for H2O, I use Storybook, and I have to say I've been pretty happy with it. There are some things that are tricky to do, but it's kind of like that thing, and, and I've noticed... I've always done this, but I finally kind of put a name on it, if you know what I mean. Like, Mm -hmm. I finally realized that when I'm learning something new, I need to get to a point and then be like, okay, that's good enough and put it aside Yep. and then wait a week or two and then come back and come back at it fresh and say, okay, now I want to challenge myself to fix this next thing. Yeah. And I feel like if I've done that, I don't get sort of weighted down by what I've been trying to learn and end up in circles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I have to start my research fresh and I end up making a lot more progress by having put it away for a little while. So it, that has happened to me uh, as you, you know, I've been working on learning Hugo. That's absolutely been the case with Hugo. And then with storybook, similarly, I'm like, I wanted to do something. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, good enough. And I let it go. And then like a month later came back to it and said, okay, I'm going to try to do that thing again. And I'm like, 
I miraculously very quickly found the answer, was able to implement it, was really happy with the outcome. I'm like, yes, I solved that thing. And it was like a big win. So I'm feeling like I'm just putting more, more and more effort into like letting myself put things aside. So at any rate, Storybook is the only of these that I have real experience with okay. other than the MOCA stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting in the sense that, you know, you, you've got um, some more movement, I would say, than we saw with the rendering frameworks or the front end frameworks. There's a lot more shuffling in this one as far yeah. as like. Testing is interesting to me. This one is a great example of what I was saying in the intro where. I, one thing I didn't say in the intro that I did want to, I want to highlight is that it's nice to be able to see that if you're using something that you don't feel like you're missing the boat or missing the, missing the ship. Yeah. Same thing. Mm -hmm. You're not missing the boat on people like jumping off the ship early and mm -hmm. you're like, I'm sticking down to it. I still love this. They're going, Oh, we, we stopped using that years ago. I'm still on vinyl. Right. Like going, well, it's coming back. Like, well, I, I guess I was hanging on for it to come back. Um, it's like people holding on to Bitcoin right now. So yes, I, like the one thing that I really liked about this is that when it comes to UX testing, so I'm trying to add some of this to uh, a couple of my different projects that I have. And there's a lot of different options. And I know I'm, I'm aware of a bunch of options, but I was looking at the different options that were out there and it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to know which one is the best one because a lot of them are talked about a lot. Um, so like, for example, playwright, Cypress, puppeteer, selenium, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, which one am I supposed to look at here? And I think that, you know, first of all, when it comes to the usage that's one thing that's going to be pretty indicative. I see storybook. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's up there. That that that's a that's one I was looking at. Cypress, same thing. Puppeteer, um, playwright. I'm like, okay, I'm using puppeteer right now. But then I look at it and just see that it's like uh, that's like a third of the respondents are actually using it. But then I I scroll down a little bit and I start and I look at the positive and negative split. And on the puppeteer side, I'm, I see like this negative spike, and I don't see it being as you know, it's, it's still a pretty solid positive spike. But I see this like negative spike, and I'm like, ah, eh, there's other ones that I've been looking at. What would I want to change it to? And playwright was one that I was seriously considering, and I'm just like, well, look at that puppet. You know, playwright has a very, very low dis dislike to it. So what's the negative? It's like yes. when we look at like you yeah. know political polls and stuff. You know, what's what is their right. disapproval numbers? You know, I yeah. you can approve of somebody, you can disapprove of somebody, or you can just be like, I mean, they're fine. I don't approve it or disapprove of them, but they're fine. The yeah. disapproved numbers are always the ones that are that you're I'm I'm more interested to see. Sure. Because those yeah, are yeah. people who they're gonna be more passionate about what they do. And so that one I felt, you know, if you really felt like you were not gonna use it again. Well, you gotta then, balance it too with percentages, which they do, so that's good. But uh, exactly. you know, Right. Because if there's a huge number of usage, you can't look at numbers for this. Oh, well, there's only five people just like, well, yeah, but there's only 10 people using it. So that's 50%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and this, this one is, I'm, I'm not going to say it yet. There's still like the dark horse in this or not the dark horse. There's still the surprise to me that I've started to look at more. And then I see it pop up here. I'm like going, okay, now I've got my, my motivation to go look at it more is even higher now. I'll come back to that later because it's going to highlight, it's going to, it's going to show up in our tooling in a little bit, just a minute. So oh. Um, dun, dun, it's there as well. actually, actually it's the tool that I looked at here and I'm like, what is this? And I see what it's kind of based on. I'm like, going, Oh, I was looking at that too. I'm like, Oh, anyway. So let's move on to another one. Okay. Unless you have, did you have anything else you want to cover no, on testing? I got nothing else. Let's talk about build tools. Yeah. 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 What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts on build tools? Well, you know, I have moved off. I've been moving off Gulp. I had some external resources that were using Gulp and I've been moving off of it and, and moving to just TypeScript, JavaScript with um, NPM scripts. Yep. And I like that. Um, and it's obvious from the rankings that it's going the way of the dodo. As I, as I said in our notes, it is yep. just, wow, that is some rock, rock sliding. Um, I'm the same um, way. I'm the same yeah. way when it comes to this. When you look at Gulp, I see the same thing as like falling off a yeah. cliff. And I also like was looking at this to kind of update. So like I, I have all my, you know, I use Hugo as well for a couple of my different sites. And there's a whole like client side component to my sites as well um, for different marketing reasons or whatever, different UX reasons. Um, and today I use Webpack for everything and I use to build everything and to, Mm -hmm. But I've been looking at different options. I'm like, what can I, what can I change this over to, to make it faster? Because it is 
I'm it's to the point where it's not as fast as I would like for it to be. And I also want to do a better yeah. configuration of some stuff. And I just yeah. like more control over the bundles and all that. <laughs> I've been looking at a couple of different tools. I've been looking at ES build. I was blown away by the speed of ES build that's baked yeah. into Hugo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, yeah. interesting. But I see people talking about things like uh roll up. And then yeah. there's one that I was like, well, would this, you know, is, is Vite one that would be, mm-hmm. That would be interesting. And the more, the more I kind of looked at Vite, and this kind of goes back to our testing, I saw mm-hmm. a Vite test. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Vite test that oh. goes with Vite. I'm like, so what is it, what's the deal with Vite? And so I started digging in a little bit more. I'm like, oh, this is a – okay. So I could use this for my compiling and my bundling and my, my building of everything. But Vite is different in that it really – it builds ES modules. And I don't have to worry about these giant JavaScript bundles. And there's a whole way to go through and to do invalidation of stuff. And they do a different mm-hmm. way of doing hot module uh, loading, uh, hot module replacement. And I was like, mm-hmm. this is really – so that's where I started like digging more into this going – it it was I was I was impressed by the speed of it, but I started to get it was kind of more reassuring to see that oh everyone else is running away from these other tools that I'm currently using going okay that's validation that I'm not the only one that feels this way yeah. yep. and but I'm and then I'm, I go through again like all right well, well would I be going in the right direction so again I scroll down to the positive negative split on build tools I look at Gulp and I'm like eh, I don't feel that negative about it I'm not thrilled with it but I don't feel like I'm not going to use it again sure. um, I yeah. would prefer not to Webpack I'm like well you know I don't feel that bad about it it works but I understand it and so whatever and then I look at Vite and I'm like holy crap people who use it really really like it and there's very yeah. few who really <clears throat> really don't I'm like and its okay. usage has shot up it's exploded like- crazy yeah it's exploded and there's yeah. a whole testing model that go along with it as well and i was like you know what and that may be why too it, you know what? it's a correlation type of thing agreed and that's where like i was kind of looking between like es build and Vite, <clears throat> and i'm like you know what okay so that to me looking at the survey was telling me based on what everybody else said going all right you know what i'm gonna be a bit of a lemming here but if everybody mm-hmm. else likes it that much and uses it that much I'm standing outside the restaurant. I'm looking at a couple of different options and there's a long wait list and I've got an option to jump in right now and skip the wait list and get into that crowd, go sit at the bar as a, as a one top. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. Thinking about, you my know, what's really interesting about this too. And something I've been kind of just reading about, I don't have a lot of expertise, so I don't want to imply that I do, but something I've been reading a lot about is kind of that, um, you know, common JS modules and ES modules and sort of the, the node JS war on that. Cause so to just level set node JS mm-hmm. by default is common JS modules built common JS modules webpack by default in its, in, in, in its, in, you know, it's a uh, solution builds common JS modules by default. It can do mm-hmm. all the other things. So I'm not trying to say it can't, but by default, that's what it does, which mm-hmm. made, Total sense given how, you know, Webpack's been around for a long time. Node.js has been around for a long time. So totally makes sense. Where Rollup ES build comes into play is they are native ES modules from the get-go. And so if you're Mm -hmm. trying to do ES modules, I feel like there's a part of my mind that's going, why would I go and use a tool like Webpack if I don't have to, when it is slower, when if my outcome wants to be ES modules, why don't I go to a tool that's going to give me that from the get-go and is going to be faster? So to your point about ES build, roll up, V, they're all ES modules first, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, you and I had a separate com- side conversation about, you know, possibility of even new ways of replacing node with things mm-hmm. that are ES module um first and i don't want to get into that but the point being is there's that whole shift in the ecosystem since es modules became a thing and so that's just that changing landscape of everything but at the very least yes i have in my solutions that i am building that are not sharepoint framework where i am stuck with webpack because that's what it uses i have started um, playing around with some of these other ones. I've done roll up. Uh, I ES build is next on my try list. I have not uh, worked with beat, but um, I'm interested now, especially because you brought it up in a way that I hadn't really thought about. Um, I, I'm not sure it fits into what I need because I don't know if I need that kind of testing piece of it. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's not necessary and maybe it's like, um, you know, uh, I, I need a screwdriver and I went out and bought an entire like, you know, sit 98 pack of like bits with an electric drill, you know, yeah. when I only needed a screwdriver. So yeah. 
I want to be careful about what I take on for that reason. But it's it's just an interesting thing to think about that I think is sort of not really addressed. Thank you very much for correcting the way that I pronounce Vite, which is really oh. Vite. <laughs> Uh, is it? I don't know. Maybe I just mispronounced it. No, you were right. You said that. And I was like, Oof. crap, I read okay. that too. And I knew that. Uh, right, I, I've been pronouncing it as Vite. And I remember reading when I was doing the research, uh, looking at this, and I was digging into more. Somebody actually pronounced on the site. It actually is. It did the whole like okay. pronounce. I was like, oh, my bad. Um, so another one too, that I thought that I wanted to throw out there was that I thought was interesting as it was about mono repos. Um, mm. This goes back to an example, and I know this is going to be, I doubt, I, I wonder how many people, one of our listeners are actually interested in this, but I've got, I do have a mono repo that I have to maintain and I've been struggling mm-hmm. on which the best way to do this. This is where I find that the different like pivots on the charts that we have are really, yeah. really useful because yep. when you look at the rankings and they've only been asking this question now for two years. So it's right, not, right, it's right. not very indicative. It kind of looks more like a subway line than it does like, <laughs> Um, it does like real trends. Yeah. Um, but when you look at like, so it, again, it defaults to retention, like that eh, doesn't say a whole lot to me. When I look at right. the interest level, you know, turbo yeah. repo was one of the ones that I was looking at going, okay, most people are interested in turbo repo when it comes to usage. It's still not heavily used <laughs> yarn workspaces or more, but I mean, you know, the numbers are pretty small. So I'm not like thinking like it's that much of a difference. Um, but when I scroll down a little bit and I look a little bit deeper in this, there's one that I recognize. It's called Rush. It was by some guys at Microsoft to build their own mono repo tool because they didn't like the tools that were out there at the time, Lerna, which was Lerna. Mm-hmm. And you can see that, I mean, like nobody's using Rush. The people who mm-hmm. have used Rush, the numbers are very small when you look at the positive negative split. So I'm just like, okay, there's other, there's other options that are out there that people are happier with and that are using, um, Mm -hmm. to go through and to build these different, build different tools. And that, that also carries over for me. That also carries over to the the other tools. You said just a minute ago, you were talking about, you know, moving off node and moving on to something else here. And, you know, we, we both listened to, thanks to you sharing it to me, sharing it with me. There was a, an, uh, interview with the guy who was the original author of node guy named Ryan. And he's now working on something else that is instead of based on common JS, it's based more on um, yes, ES modules. modules, but it's also not pinned to be like a, like, it feels like, like no JS feels like a separate version of JavaScript from what we use in the browser where the yes, project right. he's working on called Deno or Dino is, Dino, I think yeah. Dino. Yeah. Where Dino is supposed to be like a more, it's supposed to be like the more popular or the, the, the more like pure uh, play of working with JavaScript that we work with in the browser. And conceptually, I like that. But I was like, you know, I don't really know a ton about this. And it just mm-hmm. makes me feel a little bit better when I look at, you know, hey, the, the number of survey respondents, how many people even knew what Dino was? Right. 8%. Right. 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 But even better. Yep. This is the part that's funny to me. Microsoft was touting when they built their own JavaScript runtime that they swapped out for, you know, like, oh, we're going to use our JavaScript runtime. It's the best one. We're going to use this one instead of using V8 that that Google did for the Chromium or that the Chromium team used. We're going to be called Chakra. Nobody yeah. uses it. <laughs> no one. Uses it. Okay, not no one. 113 right, right. people out of 40,000 are actually aware of it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think, uh, but just to finalize your thought on Dino, it just did come out in like barely like a month or two ago. It came out for um, release. So it's really new. I think uh, if you and I had a a thing we could say for like the future, we should put a pin and and look at that and see how it grows because I'll be interested. Um, We have sort of different views on it, um, I think, or We'll see, but I'll be interested to see what happens with it over time. Cause I think it's an interesting play. So yeah. we'll see. Don't disagree. I don't disagree with that. Um, okay. What do we want to go do? What do we do next? Oh, resources. Yes. What do you want to say about resources? Well, the only thing I had, uh, I thought it was interesting. I, I glanced at it because I was like, you know, the things I was really interested in were in the library section and whatever. But I wanted to glance at um, resources because this is something that you and I are building right now, a resource. So I just kind of wanted to see what the trends are or what, you know, things were happening and how people were doing things. I thought it was interesting that of the self-directed learning 74% of um, 
uh, people were doing self-directed learning. Online free learning came in next. Videos and screencasts came in next. And books in fourth just kind of threw me. I was like, wow, still with the books? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. But Mm -hmm. those top four like make up the vast majority of how people like learn. And I thought that was really interesting um, just to take in, especially as people who put out content, you know what I mean? Like mentoring really low, podcasts really low. Thought that was interesting. You know why? Because it doesn't really match, I think, with the what we're doing. It's a hard thing to listen to. Um, you, higher education, on-the-job training, you know. Those kinds I of things. think that podcasts help in terms of awareness, but I don't think they help yes. in terms of learning. So, like, yeah. I've never looked at Dino. Mm-hmm. But I know about it because of a podcast. Right. That's it. Right. right. So coding, coding for podcast doesn't make sense to me. It, it was interesting. I had this, some guy, somebody on, uh, somebody I've known for many, many years reached out to me on over the, this past weekend on, uh, uh, on Facebook and was asking me about this whole book project and looking for like an agent to go through this book project. And he's like, are you doing any more books? And I'm like, no. And he's yeah. like, why aren't you doing more books? And I was like, I mean, I, I don't have anything against books, but I just prefer the other options that are available to me. And with my, I mean, this whole section is like written for me, for my business and what I do as it an info product person. Yeah. So like the self-directed learning, online courses, videos and screen chat, screencasts. And then yep. it's interesting to kind of scroll down a little bit farther. What, what, um, what sites and courses, uh, sites slash courses do you consult with when you're actually, when you're, when you're learning about stuff and, my goodness, this was, I mean, aside from, Hey, we got a stack overflow. We go to MDN. I don't, I'm not surprised. We go to W3 schools. That's good because at least MDN and W3 schools is very much like documentation. It's not so much like getting help, but it's docs. That's good. Yeah. I mean, that's web docs. That's exactly how it should be. But I found other ones where people like talk so great about certain things. And I'm like, are you serious? Like everyone goes crazy about Pluralsight. You're, you know, I'm like, you're at 5%. You know, there yeah. are Stack Overflow, you got nine or even like free code camp or web dev or a 31%. Then mm-hmm. the part that gets and how did I learn? It's it's funny because there's one guy in here, or LinkedIn learning less than three percent. There's one guy in here that I used to learn React. And not only is his name listed in there in that list, mm-hmm. but so are so is one of his courses. So uh mm-hmm. Ken C. Dodds, his course. Yep. Epic React, which is a great yep. React course, and then his um, he doesn't have it in here, but it was ref- it was referenced in the testing section. Is a library called Testing React, or sorry, um, yeah. Testing Library is something that he's that he's got a strong momentum behind. Yeah. The last one that I'll throw out here that as, as some really where my interest level is right now, a section on video creators. So <laughs> ideas of people to go like follow on YouTube. Idea yep. like see how they do certain things. Why are they rated so highly? Or podcasts, podcasts that you can listen to. What should be listening? What what podcast or programming related podcast should you listen to? Had you ever heard of a podcast called Syntax? No. How about HTTP two talk. or three? <laughs> That's it. A lot of those. <laughs> Which and no. that one's that one's pretty far down there, right? But like yeah. Oh. Um and the change log, that's on my list. Yeah. But I mean, it's interesting. What people do you follow on Ma- on Mastodon, on Twitter, on Facebook, on yeah. Google, on YouTube? Oh, sorry, on YouTube. Uh, this this list of like different people to, that you can go follow and that you can. I, it's it's freaking it's awesome. Yeah, no, it's super super useful, and I need to dig into this a little bit more in my free time. Did you find it was kind of interesting that a little bit farther down there's a section on other surveys that people watch. State oh. of CSS. State of oh, CSS. Oh, yes. I knew about that one. Stefan oh, has okay, but, done that one. So, but this one's interesting, right? We're talking about JavaScript developers, right? This is a state yeah. of JavaScript. 64% of the respondents knew about the state of JavaScript. Oh, sorry, the state of CSS. Yeah. But less than 50% knew about the Stack Overflow annual survey. I'm, I didn't know about it. You didn't know about the Stack Overflow survey? How are you doing this podcast? Is, 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 <laughs> who are you? Who do I? Who do I who? <laughs> I'm worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm just kidding. I only have so many hours in my day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it's interesting. It's like this one is pretty interesting. So. And I yeah. knew about state of CSS. <laughs> well, yeah, that it would, this, this isn't, this one's interesting though. This one's pretty interesting. So. 
That's pretty cool. Um, okay, you, you wanted to do awards. Well, no, there's two things I want to do really quick. So one on the oh, opinions, okay, right? One thing about the yep. opinions that I thought was interesting is if we scroll yep. down, the one section that I thought was that I wanted to call out here was what do you feel is currently missing from JavaScript? Yeah, this one was like, okay, yeah. What did you the, what do you see that's interesting? So I thought I thought this was really good. The top two I mm-hmm. found really interesting. Number one, static typing. Like uh <laughs> Okay. okay. Technically, I guess that's correct, but it's called TypeScript. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. And the other one that they say, which I don't, I, mean, I heard this debate about, should we have typing in JavaScript? And I'm like, but isn't, that's exactly what TypeScript is. So the other one that I thought was interesting is a standard library. And this is about the fight with, or the, the issues that we have with like, with NPM and the dependency chains mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And you look mm-hmm. at other, you look at other languages and, and, and platforms like go or like rust or like those and they have, do they have a standard library? They do, but then people complain about the standard library. So it's kind of like, do you this want your cake? Or do you yeah, want this was something cake? that Dino Ryan, the mm-hmm. Dino guy sort of brought up too is like, I think we should have standard libraries and I'm going to have standard libraries and that's what we're going to do. doesn't mean you can't use your own, but we're going to have some standards. I, yeah. This is really falls into the, you want your cake and eat it too. So it's fine with you until you're not happy with one of the standards and then you're bitching about it at all. So yeah. I, yeah. I, it's yep. tricky. I, I will say it's tricky because I mean, you have to rely on people maintaining their community projects, you know, yep. whatever, because it's a free inco- ecosystem for the most part. And you know what free means? You get what you get. And you don't get upset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to talk about before we go into awards? No, no. Am I clicking on this for the first time? Yes, I am. You are. Okay. So let's do this together. Right. Okay. Um, Yep. So most adopted feature. So that's the list at the very beginning. What do you think that is? Oh, let's just, uh, let's just click on it. Let's just get your reaction. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Gonna. Oh, for freak's sake. <laughs> really? <laughs> Top level of weight? Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right. <sighs> now, this is where I think the survey got really interesting because and for me, it was very, very timely. Most adopted technology. Okay. It's brand new and it's Veet. It's only no. two years old. It's Veet. And That's it's got- interesting. So that really supports what you were saying earlier, too, mm-hmm. is like, yep. All right. Well, you're going to get back to me on that. And uh, I'll decide then after we're you not, do all the work. We're not done yet. Okay. Highest retention. Highest retention. <gasps> Sky Veet high. Again. 98% retention, yeah. retention ratio. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. what's number two? <clears throat> Testing, testing library, library for it, or yeah, you're talking yeah, about yeah, the te- yeah, yeah. V test, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highest level of I'm interest. Veet. Oh my God, this thing is taking a run. It's it's getting all the awards. Yeah. Okay. okay now the most last one. Write ins. Most write ins. Clearly, Veet is not going to be here. But yeah, right. I don't even Astro, know. Astro. We is. didn't really talk about Astro today. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. Azure Functions made the list. That was interesting. Yeah, on most write ins. That is. Yeah. Uh, most commented feature. What feature received the most private comments? Fields. Private fields for JavaScript, right? Because nothing is truly private. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. So it's probably people are like, WTF, this isn't really a thing. Yeah. Interesting. What is the most commented nope. library? Oh, uh, React. Mm-hmm. Not shocked. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if we could just get a most commented and then we could do like um sentiment analysis on I the comments. Just, yeah. <laughs> I was we just don't have say that power, that. but we'd like to. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Angular and then storybook for those as well. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So those were interesting. Cool. Yeah. There's a good um there's a very good uh uh wrap up that they have a conclusion um where the director of web infrastructure, director of engineering of web and web infrastructure at Google, Sarah Drasner, mm-hmm. had uh something that she wrote up, um JavaScript and TypeScript are more vibrant than ever. I mean, yeah. it's a good it's a good conclusion. 
Uh, it's kind of self-serving coming from somebody, I think, in the web space. I mean, it does. Agreed. You're going to say that it's like, it, that you know life is good and you know, everything is trending upwards on JavaScript. <laughs> so it's not too surprising there. Um, but yeah. Yep. Oh well. It's kind of yeah, like, it was that, good. That'd be like kind of like asking somebody like you know is climate is climate change real and having a book about a book that it says no and who's a forward by but like you know one of the CEOs of one of the big oil companies like yeah right exactly <laughs> like, yeah right surprise yeah um, yeah shocking this, this was fun I I would I, I if you if you watch the, this whole thing uh, and you're if interested you in JavaScript dev if you stuck with us. <laughs> Y'all go to the conclusion side, go to the conclusion section of the survey, scroll to the bottom, plug in your email address about um, staying in touch with them so that you can get notified when the survey opens up again next year uh, for yeah. the next survey. They don't spam you. They don't overload you with stuff. You can, all, yeah, I've also no, joined their don't. discord and they're really like, I don't, I don't get spammed by these guys. So I mean, I, they do a very, very respectful and good job of this. Um, and um, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big fan. So hundred percent. That was a really fun episode. And I'm really interested to see what our listeners and people who are watching this video think. I would love for people to comment and say whether they found it interesting or not or helpful or not. Because, um, you know, who knows? We don't want to do things that people aren't interested in. So please leave us a comment one way or the other, letting us know whether you thought this was useful or not. And absolutely, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe uh, by smashing that subscribe button um, so that you'll get notified when we have new Cloud Dev Clarity episodes, browser native episodes, or Andrew puts out some new content. You're going to get to know all about that. And then, you know, follow us. And we'll uh, see you again with some more uh, interesting episodes that talk about uh, Microsoft 365 and Azure development topics. Thanks.